Hello and welcome to the uh, 12th Raspberry Pi tutorial. Um, today what we'll be doing is um, is making your snake basically bigger and actually move like a snake rather than just having one block. So as you'll see here I can um, move this green block around the screen. And then um, I've not implemented the bit where the snake will eat the food yet. But if you press spacebar and keep tapping that your snake basically gets longer. Um, and as you can see, it's very much like a snake, uh, or like the game anyway. Um, there's no like collision detection or anything, so everything can just sort of crash into everything. The only thing that does happen is if you get to the edge, it'll it'll stop, stop moving. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we're gonna be that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, so yeah. Uh, I'll get just get into the code, um, but just before I start, uh, as always, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who's um, been subscribing and watching the tutorials, and um, the code for this will be in the description as well if you're having trouble. And also, um, if anyone's got any like any ideas on or anything they'd like me to cover, um, it doesn't have to be in Python or anything like that. Just anything you think would be good to do a tutorial on um that would be that would be helpful so i can start getting some some more ideas together if you remember from last time the snake part um i inherited sprite for that but actually i've um when i was putting in the um the bit where you have like a collection it's actually easier just to have a snake part as like a normal class and then just keep it in a normal list in this instance anyway um it was it was for me with with the uh with the coding so basically the only difference i've made to snake part is that um it does it no longer inherits um pygame.sprite and um so that means that i need to give it a draw method which basically uh, you, it's the same as how like it would be if it was a sprite you've got a draw method and then you pass through the screen and then you just basically say screen.blit um, self dot image and self dot rect. Um, so that's that's that. Um, <clears throat> and then what else? Have, what else have we got? Well, obviously there's the snake. So, um, so basically this class handles um, everything to do with it. It basically manages a collection of those of those snake parts. Where we start by getting our screen rectangle that's passed in by the uh, by the main loop. And we also set our default direction to um right. Um I've got a variable called length as well. Um and that's more for like that's for later on. Um just so like we can have like a, a text thing in the bottom or something saying how many like parts there are and stuff like that. And then um we're creating a list called parts. Now in Python to create a list you do like so let's go self dot list equals um, that wouldn't be a valid name actually because list is a type but you do um, square brackets <clears throat> and then basically um, you can put like so if I wanted a collection of text you could do like hello and then have, an, have the next item by going hi and they will both be items in, in the list <clears throat> um, and what I'm doing here is by, by saying snake part and then passing through a, um, a screen rectangle that's actually creating one instance of the snake part class and putting that into the list of parts. Um, and we've also got a variable here called extending, which is used, um, which is used to know if the snake needs to go bigger. Um, so, the update function—that's where all the main stuff um, happens—and we need to go through and basically individually update each snake part. Um, so. Um we make a um we make a variable called new direction um and set that to what our direction is. Um and that's gonna be used used down here and we're also gonna create variables called old direction and new part that are gonna be used in this loop. Um and basically what we're saying is if the snake's extending um then we need to set last part so we need to um, get the la basically the latest object that was added to the list 
and that's by um, referring to the parts collection and then putting in an index, which is like um, a number that um, identifies an object or is like paired with an object. So like the first, the first object is zero, and then the next one's one, and so on. Um, a minus one is the is the last one, like the newest item in the list. So um, we basically make a make a new part. Um, which is a, a new instance of snake part um, and then we pass through the screen rectangle uh, and we also pass through the um, the x, y and direction of the previous part and that's so um, that's so the parts aren't overlapping and then um, we need to make it we need to have like a loop with a stopping condition or with two stopping conditions rather um, so we've got a count to keep track of where we are um, and we've got total parts as well, which is the which is the number of parts in self dot parts, and that len function um, len stands for length. So the total parts is the number of parts in that collection, um, and then we've got a variable called update result, um, and that'll be set to false if one of the parts um, hits the side. So we've got while count is less than total parts. So um, basically either until we get to the end so um until count which is going to start at zero um is like at that um number of total parts or if the update result is true um we're going to keep going um through this loop um and basically what we're going to do is we're going to um get the old set the old direction to the parts like current direction and then we're going to um change the parts direction to a new direction um and then we're going to say run the parts update function um and then basically we get that into update result and um when you do part.update that returns a result and if one of the parts has touched the side then that's going to return false which will then stop the loop because the loop's only going to carry on while count is less than total parts and update result is true. We run the update function and then um, we set the new direction to the old direction for the next part and then basically increment the count. Um, and uh, this might be a bit confusing. It was com it was a bit confusing to me, um, to be honest, when I wrote it, but. If you are, if you um, have a look through the code, you'll start to understand the um, the logic behind it. And then uh, the last thing we're going to do is say if we are extending, then um, run the extend function, which is down here, and you basically pass through your new part. And um, and what the extend function is going to do is basically add the part that's being passed in to the collection of parts. Um, increment the length by one, and then set the extending value back to false, so we don't keep adding um, adding like new parts on. Um, and then we've got the draw function as well, which is going to um, basically go through each part in the list of parts, and then call that parts draw function, um, which was basically a screen dot blit on the screen that's being passed through. Um, and another thing that's quite important as well, and this is called from the main loop, is um, a function to change the snake's direction. Now, the reason we need a function to do this is because um, if you think about it on the game, if you if you move the snake, um, you shouldn't be able to go backwards. So basically, if I if I'm going up. And I press the down arrow, nothing happens, and that's the way it should be. Because otherwise, the snake will be able to go back on itself, which is um, which is wrong. So, um, so basically, what what we're saying is, we've got an if statement for each direction, and then saying, um, and if the new direction which has been passed in is the opposite directions so we've got right, right and left, left and right, down and up, up and down, um, then we set change to false, and uh, we only change the direction if uh, change is true. So um so that's the that's the snake part. That's the snake part covered. Um I have been through everything in the uh food class it's fine. Snake part 
Got just a little function to change the direction there. Um, and that just made it look a bit neater. So I thought, because um, it's done like that um, to the snake class, so I thought I'll do it in the park class as well. Um, and that is about it. So um, that's all the, like, <coughs> the main bits covered. Um, and then the only differences we've got in uh, in here now is that um, we're creating an instance of a snake rather than um, an instance of one snake part. And the only sprite now in the collection which I've changed to the name Food Sprite is um, is the food class. Uh, so in the main loop, um, we've got Food Sprite.Update and uh, Food Sprite.Draw. Um, and then... We've got our manual methods, which aren't part of like a, a sprite group, for um, self dot snake dot update and self dot snake dot draw. Um, we update the display, and uh, we handle events. Now, um, the only thing that's changed here is um, when you change the key, you've got like self dot snake dot change direction, which is that function we said before. And um, if someone presses the space, which is k underscore space. Um, then the snake will like will set extend into true, and then the snake will know to add one part on next time um, this update function gets called. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. But yeah, um, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next week.